All right, today I want to talk about why nobody wants to be around you. And to attest to my credibility, why I can even speak on this, I'm going to tell you a little story. So back when I was younger, back when I was in about sixth grade, I was on this field trip. And it's like all the way out in nature and stuff. There's no phones, no nothing, right? It's like you're in cabins, you go on hikes, and you just hang out, basically. It's like a retreat. And... So before you go on the retreat, there's like these forms that you have to fill out. And like one, a part of that form was, okay, who do you want to be with like in the cabin, on the trails, at the dinner tables, and like these different groups that you're going to have while you're on the camp. And when we get to the camp, they begin to call out the cabins, right? The, the people who are in the same cabins. And I remember they called my first friend, then my second friend, then my third friend. I'm waiting for my name, but they didn't call me. They just started listing out the people from the other the other school that were also in that cabin. I was in this other cabin with these people I didn't really know, people in my class that you know I knew, but I didn't really talk to because I wasn't very social, and I was super disappointed because I was like I put you know these three friends that I wanted to be with and I didn't get to be with them. I was with them on the hiking trails and the dinner tables and stuff, but I wasn't with them in the cabin. And the reason like I literally like thought about it was because because it's about importance my other three friends had put each other for like the first the first step right the first person that they really want to be with and so because they put each other they got in the cabin because that was the most important we were all on the same trail because i was probably in like the second or third slot for who they wanted to be with and you know it it didn't feel good honestly i felt like i wasn't respected i felt like i wasn't valued I felt like I wasn't the guy that people wanted to be around. But now, honestly, a couple of days ago, I was sick, right? I was sick from school. I didn't go to school. And I remember coming back to school. And when I came back to school, we had this project going on, basically. And you get to pick your partners. And a couple of my friends were at school, but I wasn't at school. And there were other friends that were also at school, but... These friends didn't even pick that other friend who was at school to be in the same group. They picked me who was sick, who wasn't even there to be in their group because it was like a long, like a group project that like lasts a week, right? I wasn't even there and they picked me to be in that group with them because they genuinely respect me and value me. That's what I think at least. So to get to be the person that people actually respect and people actually want to be around, you have to be a leader and not a follower. When I was younger, I used to be the person who was always just trying to be the guy who got included in the group. I was just hoping, I was looking at these other guys. And I remember like in these cabins, when I went to the cabin with the people I didn't really know, all I could think about was, oh, are my friends having fun? Are my friends having fun? That's all I could think about. I couldn't even like enjoy being in the, this own cabin. Like this was supposed to be a retreat. I was supposed to enjoy it. I didn't even have fun. If you're always putting the people as the goal, you are never going to be the person that people actually value. To be a leader, you have to have your own goals. You have to have things that you're actually working towards. And that doesn't mean being selfish, but it does mean actually being ambitious. You can't just be the person who's always just thinking about, like, how do you, how do you expect to be valued if all you're thinking about is being the person that people want to include. Like they're not just gonna include you because you exist. That's unfair. You have to provide something and you have to be ambitious. People want to be around the winners, right? And it sounds bad, but it's the truth, okay? You know, at first, when you're young, when you're very young, it's not gonna be based on anything. It's literally just pure randomness, right? The people who are, who, people who are popular is just pure randomness. But as you get older, you realize the people who have a lot of friends and have people coming to them to talk to them, they come to them because they are respected. Why? Because they are ambitious, because they are winners in something, because they are successful in something, because they're not like every single other person. To become a winner or someone that is respected, you have to take on the pain that nobody else is willing to take on. And that means to stop indulging in things that you know are not you're not supposed to indulge in. For me, my best example I can give to you is video games, right? Oh my goodness. I I I don't even understand why this was difficult for me to stop, but 
in my mind, I was like, oh, I just want to play video games, right? This is, this is what everybody does. I want to play video games with my friends. And I would always be the, per- <laughs> by the way, I would always be the person who they would play with. And I, I'd have to like ask them if I could, you know, join their lobby. Like they would never invite me. I'd have to ask them to, if they would let me join their lobby. But anyway, I used to just hold on to video games. I couldn't let myself actually focus on something that's important because I was always attached to video games. I was like, Ugh, video games, right? I mean, I can just, I can just lower the amount of time I play. I can just spend 30 minutes. That's okay, right? You have to be drastic. Playing, okay, 30 minutes every day is not enough. Saying, okay, just 10 minutes today, but then on the weekends, you might be able to play 30 minutes. That's not enough. You quit it completely. You have to be completely drastic. If you want to quit something, you quit it. And you do that by changing your identity. It's not by, oh, let me just play 10 minutes today, 15 minutes, right? Let me just lower the amount of time. No, you have to stop completely. You have to shift your identity. And that is the greatest piece of advice I can give to you. I want to ask you a question right now. I'm going to ask you a question, okay? And I want you to literally look at me in the eyes and respond to me. Say it out loud. I don't care where you are. You're going to respond to me and you're going to say it out loud. Do you think that you can be the person who can be respected? Do you think you have it in you to be respected? Answer me right now. Look me in the eyes and answer me. If you just answered yes, you are dumb. Like you're genuinely like, That is the worst answer that you can give me. That is garbage. You have no idea what you're talking about. If you just answered yes, if you think that you can be the person who's respected, that's garbage. Because you can apply this to anything. If you were the person that could be respected, you would have already been respected. The version of you that you are right now, you need to kill that version of you. You need to destroy that version of you. You are not enough. You are ne- if you were going to be respected, you would have already been respected. If you were going to have a lot of money and you don't have a lot of money and you think you can make a lot of money, you would have already made that money. So the version of you that's right now and the knowledge that you have right now is not enough. You are not that person. Okay? So literally destroy yourself. Kill the version of you that you are right now. And become the version that you want to be by internalizing first that you are that person. Result changes through action and action changes through beliefs and beliefs change through identity. So what you have to do is in your mind, create the identity that you are already your 2.0 version. And every single day when you wake up, oh, I was gonna play video games, but that's not me anymore, right? That's not me, I'm, I'm the new version, right? I'm the winner. I'm the guy who's respected. So, I mean, why would I play video games? That's, who is that? That's not me. When you think like that, you will not be tempted to do dumb things. I'm going to be honest. You will not be tempted to play video games. Who, who, can you think of one respected person that plays video games? And that's what you worry about? Like, that's what you have a hard time just stopping? Playing video games, indulging in something like that, something that's literally destroying you. All right. So what you have to do, you, I'm telling you, the greatest thing you have to do is create that new version of you and live by those standards every single day ruthlessly. Just say, I'm not that person. Okay. So if you're about to not read a book, choose to not read a book and instead play, play video games, you are not the person that plays video games. So why would you even play video games? Not that person. The beliefs and knowledge that you have are not enough. And the number one thing, the best thing that you can do is read to increase the knowledge that you have in your head. Again, you don't have it in you to become successful or you would have already become successful. So you need to learn from the people who have already done it and read and written a book for you. They've poured their mind into something that you can consume. You can take everything that they've already done and use it for yourself. Use their knowledge. They've done everything for you. All you have to do is open your eyes and stop being like when I was younger, I used to think that reading books was like cringy, right? I was like, I was like disgusted by reading books. What kind of mentality is that? Like, actually, like, think about it. 
That is just the dumbest mentality. If I'm not successful already, if I'm not the greatest version I am already, why would I not learn from the people who are? Why would I not learn from the people who have everything that I could want? Success in every single way. Why would I not learn from that person? Like, it's, it's just, it's dumb. I don't understand. Why are you not reading? All right, so I'm going to give you some books that I want you to read if you are not someone who reads a lot, all right? So here are the books that I would definitely recommend reading. I wrote it down for you. Number one, The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday, I believe. I think it's by Ryan Holiday. And this is just a book about stoic philosophy. It's just about doing the hard thing regardless of how you feel. It's about disregarding your emo- or not disregarding, but letting go of your emotions and acting through rational thought, right? This will create you. This will make you a powerful person. Then we have the charisma myth. This is what started the whole social skills. This is what created everything, right? Once I had the identity, I was like, you know what? I'm not the weird kid anymore. I'm not the awkward guy. I'm the social person. And because I'm a social person, I will read the charisma myth. I am an attractive person. I'm going to read the charisma myth. I read that book and it just completely reinforced everything. I went out and used its practices and I, it just, I became that social guy, bro. Read the charisma myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. Presence, power, and warmth. Everything came from that book. All right. And the last book, the third book, I'd say, I mean, not the last book, definitely keep reading. But the third book, if you haven't started reading that much is The Courage to Be Disliked. I don't know who this is by. It's by some Japanese author. I don't know how to pronounce his name. But it's a really good book about how you need to detach and really think about your philosophy and how you want to be happy. It's a really good book to redo your mind, basically, and kind of understand how you think and how you should think, right? It's not just like, oh, I'm going to think this way because like, So many people just go about their lives and they don't even think about how they think. Like that's something that should take a large part of your day. Just thinking about what are the thoughts that I'm allowing in my head? What are the assumptions in my head that are true or not? And this book is like really about what exactly is in my head. All right. Now, once you start reading, we need to work on your presence when you're in a social interaction. How you look like, how you smell like, who you are, right? And the first thing you got to do, you need to build a body, period. Like, you need to do this. If you, if, you're, if you look in the mirror right now, you take off your shirt, assuming you're a guy, and you see a skinny, fat body, or you see a fat body, or you see a skinny body, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing, bro? It is, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's simple. It's simple and it is so important to take care of your health, all right? There's, there's no excuses. If you're a guy who can't afford or have the time to drive to the gym, fine. Work out at home. That's what I did. I'll, have, I'll start working on a guide. I'll start working on more information for you. But you need to get into the habit of caring about how your body looks, how it feels, and how it operates. Okay, and then finally, the most important one of these is charisma. Do you have charisma when you're in a social interaction? So obviously go watch my video, but what you can do right now, a couple of tips that I don't have in that video is you need to breathe deeply. Like imagine you're just breathing all the way to the bottom of your stomach, like all the way there. And I promise you, if you breathe deeply, first of all, you can't have bad posture. If you actually breathe deeply, your, your chest will just naturally open up, first of all. And then second, your mind will slow down. You stop your thoughts from racing. And that's my other point, which is you need to stop thinking about yourself and stop getting in your head. One way you can do that 100%, just breathe deeply. It just solves everything. And then number two, you can think about what the other person needs. So many people would just get into the mindset of, oh, oh what, what do I got to say? And you're just pre-planning your response and you just look awkward. You just look dumb. And those, those moments happen when the person asks you a question and you don't hear that question and you say, wait, what did you say? And it just looks horrible, right? You don't want that to happen. Actually think about them, be present, genuinely have your eyes on them and breathe deeply and you won't have to worry about your head getting, talking about things and getting caught up in your head. All right. 
So do these things and I promise you, you'll find it that people will actually value you and respect you and you might be the person where people will include you in their group even when you're not there. All right, I hope you got something from this video. Go out and conquer.